Hello, my name is Ash and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we are going to be going over the basics of Python and this programming. So basically we're gonna go here and we're not gonna make graph user interfaces, we're gonna go into the output of Python. Okay, so as you can see here, nothing here, let's start coding, you can type stuff, obviously. As in code wood. So we're gonna import something, all right? Let's import. Uh, first thing you want to do is import something, all right? Now, you could make programs without importing, uh, such as, I don't know, like, online book. Or if it is, no, yeah, you can use something like online book or maybe uh, a cached book or something of a kind. But really, there's not much you can do without imports. Uh, you can do plenty of things without imports, but it's not really that, that essential stuff. You can do complicated stuff. It's just not really that useful all right import something it's missing anything lib you have libs here right now if you go to the libs that's importing everything from the libs right so what we're going to do is if you want to import something from the lib all right there's a socket which is basically the internet and you know how to connect and binding and all that so we're going to import uh math because we're just going to do math right now um and you can, that's all you have to do but you can also do other commas such as you want to import socket with math so you can do socket math so you could combine those two. Very great, very amazing. Let's take it back a step now. I mean, let's go in the... Uh, let's, um... From math, we're gonna import something. Import everything. So this is very common SQL, structured query language. We have this um, study me here and it's gonna take everything from the math that you're importing so you import everything from math all right cool great we're gonna print something now with the math we just did we can use it a little bit later but basically that's how you do it don't know how to get math let's go here powershell or cmd go to your powershell and you're gonna go and you can do pip pip is already installed by the basis of python if you do not install pip then you can use pip now, a very useful thing to use pip for is for a pi installer. As you see, it's already there. But if you want to install pi installer, that's how you do it. Pi installer. As you see here, requirement already satisfied, already downloaded. But let's say you want to do pi installer. Well, let's, uh, I know what's going up. Let me check something. These are all the commands it converts to Python. To exe, um, we're not gonna use graph user interface, but we are for today. We use the output file, like I said. But you can put this graph user interface in the exe, so people can um, steal your code that you take a lot of time to code with. And it's all stored in binary. Pretty sure this way to actually hack it and just get the code and tweak a little bit so it looks like yours. But yeah, it should be a uh, should be pretty secure. So we're gonna have this, and we're gonna use the printing and the print statement for today. And this is very rudimentary and very precarious. It's it's basically almost as programming, quote unquote, tradition. But uh, basically, you're gonna print something when you use the print command, and you're gonna put these two parentheses here. These two parentheses will be compressing everything except the command because you want the command to affect the, everything inside here. So um, since this is gonna be a string, a string is basically something that is used, and it is very legible to non-programmers, non-hackers, basically. It's a plain sentence, so it's a plain sentence, but a very traditional one is hello world. I, this is uh, hello world. Look at that. You have officially created your program. Uh, with this, you can actually run it and look at that. It prints hello world. Well, let's say you want to store it. I, I don't want to print it. I want to store it. Let's put a variable. Variable equals the string here. Look at that, it's just a variable. That's nice for variable. That's just for variable. Variable, you can name it anything. You can name it dude off. You can make it dog. You can name it your dog. It doesn't matter. As long as it's equal to something. You obviously want to have it correlate to something. You really just want to name it a random word like artichoke yeah, because you're not going to know what it means. You want to put basically a very understanding of it. So you want to put something like print underscore hello world. You cannot put spaces, you gotta put underscores. Kind of like a username. 
and basically with that you can go here and you can even put a capitalized if you want camel case camel case is used for classes though we'll go into that a little bit later uh it's gonna print hello world no it's not gonna print hello world it's gonna it's gonna start in a cache a personal cache inside the computer and with this personal cache you could bring it out let's see you want to print something let's print print hello world all right let me actually name it to a variable print hello world let's uh, get all those let's just put it to variables there you go a little bit nice there now that you can actually sort of understand what it is instead of thinking that print hello world is actually the command itself print the variable variables hello world correlation you know co common just sense here sort of uh so we have uh <laughs> this hello world statement but hey, uh, you can also store numbers. You can store anything. You, you can store code or commands. You can do I don't know that. Let's let's do that. Let me see. What's, what does it put? Oh, it prints out leap. See, so they they are correlated in a sort of triangle here. And with that, we are also let's, let's just add point four. 69 all right it's still gonna print it here so it, it does not have to be in between that's only for values values are numbers so only numbers can does not have to be inside the quotes or as they are not strings or values pretty 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 amazing all right let's just go on with some more stuff uh, so I'll go here all right. Uh, you don't you don't, you don't have you don't have to just print all that. Uh, why, why why would you want to use this? Why do you want to use this? You said uh, you could sort of actually combine them. Actually, when you think about it, because you actually create shapes for banners for terminal programs. You want to do terminal and not grab user interface. You should not grab user interface and use terminal because terminal is very out of date, kind of like the DOS, the disk operating system. So it's very important that you don't do that. And we're gonna go here and we're just gonna put variable. Or not variable. I guess you can make it though. Uh, banner, banner equals blah blah blah. But no, we can just name it a variable. All right, with that, let's just print. Let's just print something. Let's print a square. You guys like squares? I like squares. Squares are nice colors. Uh, so we're gonna go and put this pipe here. Oh, I see something. That because that is a command itself. Uh, that is command. We'll go into that later though. squares let's just do that all right create the square you don't need this in graphic user interface the graphic user interface already has a canvas kind of cool if it does that uh, I use TK enter for graphic user interface that's the most widely used one uh, it's the most best one too so might as well use it uh, so once you have that let's say you have a copyright thing the copyright has a whole bunch of stuff equal to a whole bunch of stuff, I'm talking about a whole bunch of stuff, so let's say you have an entire sentence, like a big fat juicy sentence, uh, copyright, hello, 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 this is copyright, until, oh this is, I don't think copyright lasts, I think copyright lasts forever, but whatever, this is copyright until, uh, variable, let's add variable, what do we want to add, let's add something, print this out actually I need a print function I don't want to do that all right so the print function you don't have to do every I'm doing you can do your own text that's how you learn so copyright this is copyright until copy tight copyright this is copyright until we're gonna add we're gonna add something that's why we have to add symbol you know uh, we're gonna add our variable uh, then we're gonna add something else. Let's add. Okay. All right. Variable equals. So as you see here, it's saying, "Hey, wait a second. You can't do that. You 
You can't do that. It's it has numbers in it in decimals. Oh, so chase back error. What's a chase back error? Let's take a type error. It's a type of error. This is in the group. This group is not equal to the error. Or it's creating an error because it's not the right group. So you can only concatenate print strings and not float. This is a uh uh it's a plus B float. But let's what happens if you just put in a string? Problem solved. Problem solved, right? No, that is very hacky, as people call it. Hacky. As in, it's not that professional, it has to have solid fix, and if it does have a value and you put it in a print, other things that you put in as code may not work because they think it is a string when it's actually a value. So you gotta put something. Let's put it to a uh, float. Right? That'll work out. Let's put it here. But no, you can't just do that because the float, float itself, that's what it is. You cannot do float. So, but integer, or also known as int. Int, well, it has decimal, so it's not going to work. What happens if you just put, let's put string, str, string. All right. All right, cool. So, this is copyright until leaked for 2069 okay so you have a very large terms of service you don't have to go ahead and retype everything you could do the control f but then again that's not very good it's sort of hacky uh, they might have other you know shadow variables which are variables that are just there that are just outsiders or that has double the name so a variable and a variable equals something else that's basically what i mean it equals something else so that's not what you want it's sort of contradictory you can't do that for that particular sense you want to use the stirs and the variables all right let's add another bit of uh, code here uh, also you actually as you see there they're over there you see we want to add a space they're not they're not extruded. Let's extrude it. Look, they're extruded now. See? They have space in between. Pretty cool, right? Alright, so. Uh, we also have. All that. Now we're gonna go to Booleans a little bit later. But anyways, okay, uh, we have that, now we're going to do is that we are going to be putting strings, but we're just going to be concatenating it. There you go, look what that does. Concatenation, look, it just it splits in half, basically. You can also do that to create spaces. Let, uh, let's say you instead you want to do that, you know, print something, but it's literally nothing. And it's just that. Well, you don't have to do that. If you want to add an extra space, let's go here, and just put it this it has a double space so it's also used for spaces too this is very useful in arc parts or for our terminal based programs inside here that's how they do it uh, let's just type in a uh, pi installer oh, no. pit page, I guess. all right as you see here it's going to put a uh, concatenation that's how they do it they put the slash n wherever program uses which is obviously c such as windows uh it works pretty cool all right so we have that let's just do something else okay so we have strings awesome strings are cool but let's let's go into the uh dots or the extension of commands so Let's go here and we're gonna print something. But we're gonna print something. But it's going to be variable. Uh, variable. I guess you could put here actually. Let's put phrase term. Phrase. Let's name a phrase. All right, let's name a phrase. Uh, we're just gonna put cool. Phrase equals cool. Uh, we're gonna print something. Let's print, let's print phrase. But wait, it's not capitalized. Uh, well, wait, you can do other stuff upper. Uh, might seem a little bit rudimentary, but I want to do it to itself. As you see, this little self here, applied to itself. So I want the phrase to be upper, but 
it's going to affect itself. Uh, then, dot. Uh, do, no, 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 no. Let's do that. All right. What do we get? Cool. It's all uppercase. It's also for number of variables. Importing statement, statement, statement. Importing. This method is import. Other importing stuff, those are actually useful. We'll go into sockets, you'll make your own programs, you make your hacking programs, you'll make backdoors and viruses. But we gotta learn the program first. So we're gonna do some very boring stuff. It's still cool, it's still complex, but it's not useful. So nothing cool is happening. Uh so we're gonna go uh, use a phrase there. Uh, so let's say you do replace there's a whole bunch of stuff you do dot you look at the look at the what's it called look at the sockets so you're gonna go here uh, I guess school hangouts all right and so you go here and you can put this all he's late all commands for minecraft. Okay, so Minecraft, uh, we'll also do, we also do, okay, let's, let's look at one, I think, it was, I'll just do socket, alright, I was trying to think of more complex one, you guys might understand, but I'm just gonna go socket, so look at my page, read all this, read all that, so it's, what, what am I doing, Python, Python, I, don't, I keep on getting Poe and Python, I don't know why they get in the mix up so much, Python, socket, all right, now it's gonna go here, I guess. All right, you gotta get all the little um, networking interface. That's what we always do. I guess this one, if you wanna do more advanced ones. Read all this, you don't have to, but I did. All right, anyways, <laughs> uh, yeah. And basically, you can have dots, and then you'll be able to put the commands there, like I just showed you, like this one. I don't think that's the right one. Is this one? Alright. Alright, so there's this one. So we're gonna go and as you see, let's see if you can find it. Dot 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 you're not doing what I want you to do. It's not showing commands. Maybe the other one did it. I don't know why I'm looking down. Is it here you go? Is this one? There you go. So we have socket dot something. Don't want it to be slow to look at. I'm gonna stretch a little bit. We have it. All that is commands. Let's put it down a little bit. Phase up here. Uh, so you do that. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's do that. All right. So you do math. You do math. You do powers of stuff. Let's actually let's actually do something. Let's actually let's actually do um we'll just power something. We'll power the x and the y, which are the variables. We're gonna put two and two. Which just should be just four of course. Yeah, it's four. But what 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 if it has some decimals in it? Bep. There you know that oh See there? So puts it. Alright. We do powers, which is the math we just imported. So very nice, very cool. Well, those are very cool stuff. But we're gonna go into a little more advanced stuff. We're gonna be making our own cube. Alright. That's the uh cube. We can do square, but we're gonna go cube. And we're gonna put Three. All right. So we're gonna define our own little. This is like a mini program. It's a you're gonna define your code, but it's gonna name cube. This is uh very nice. And if this is we're gonna define what we wanna put, it's gonna be cube. And we're gonna use the three because we're gonna need return. Return is basically the we wanna put output. So we're gonna be put three times three. It's not literally the number three. We just 
trying to get an input of three. All right. And basically, it's still doing itself. It's going to be using the three. We use the three. We just identified. It may not make sense, but think about it, and it will. All right. As far as two spaces, because Python, right? Now we're going to print. We want to use program. We just mini program, sort of the script we use. It's going to be cube. What kind of input do you want? Put four. All right. To be like, I don't know. Should be that should be 64. Let's see. Yep, it's 64. All right. See so yeah, there's 64 there. Uh, let's see if we can see it. Can you see it now? Okay, 64. All right. The print cube. Now, now we just did that. We get we get a big little more complex program mini script as you will we're gonna be making a minimum number script in these two spaces because of its large out in case let's go catch one minimum are you gonna call it minimum actually so just use minimum i'm saying minimum no that's let's name it minimum number all right number one okay number two Number three is all names. You really name it anything. Number four, but we're gonna need something that actually correlates. Let's define the code now. We need an indentive. We're gonna use if. Now these if they're not booleans. Well, booleans are true and false. These are just if statements. Yeah, if. So let's say that number four is greater than or equal. Not. I mean, if it's greater than, that's the equal. It's this is how as long. Okay, then it's not great. It's not less than or equal. This is actually less. This is not less than or equal to. It's just how Python works. Because there's this one, which is if it does equal, or if it does not equal. If this one is larger, if this one is smaller to the number one, and if the number, and if number the fourth, the fourth number. Greater than number four, which is less than not greater than. I don't know why I keep it saying greater than. It's less than number three. All right. All right. So if it equals to number, not number three, we're gonna return number four. Because that's the first one you put. I'm, I'm gonna break it down a little bit more. All right. So if number four is less than number one and number four is less than number four, nope, that's not that's not that's make any sense. Two. If number four is less than number three, then the minimum number must be number four. It's very immature. It's it's sensible thinking. It's process elimination. Elif. So let's start with the first one. L ifs are basically else if. So this is the middle ones. This is the middle ones. So after that one is done, we have uh, L S if the number three is less than less than the number one and number three. Is less than number two and if number three is less than number four then it must be number three return number three all right process of elimination let's see uh, is, is it good well no these are not equals who equals here all right so i love number one i love number one number one and number three number two number three this is also number four. Then must be number four. Let's do LF. All right. Uh, LF re-input numbers. And then the last one, number two. Well, not the last one, but it's it's. But post elimination is the last one. Okay, you know what to do. Try to complete this code yourself. All right. Uh, 
I'll just do exactly what I'm doing. That's not here gonna learn. Then you go to return. Number two. I already described what these do, so I need to have to explain. I know you might be thinking, oh, well, okay, do we have to do the same exact thing for number one? No. Let's turn number one. There you go. Alright, now we're going to return number one because post elimination. If this, 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 no, if this, this, no, if this number, this number, and this number, and this number are not, uh, are not what? Are not minimum numbers, then it must be number one for post elimination. So that's what we're gonna do. Now we're gonna print something. We're gonna put input. All right. We're gonna talk about input a little bit later. This is not really user input. This is just developer input. So like those uh, notes, which we'll go on later. Uh, let's just put one, two, three, four. All right. Space there. All right. Let's find out. So it should print out one. It prints out one. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. What if we put what number one was actually not one? It was actually. Oh, it's gonna print out two. Look at that! It prints out two. Amazing. All right. So we made a little bit of program there. Minimum numbers. I uh, I don't know why anybody need to do that, but you could. So we have that, and basically you don't have to do this a few times like the cube I just did. Uh, it'd be just more useful, or it could be socket internet, you know, you could also do that. Uh, pretty sure there's sockets where it has to find a minimum number, somewhere around there. So, it is pr pretty, pretty useful, but generally this is just a basic overview of what you can do with elf and if statements. If, 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 elf, 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 and it goes in an array and it goes in a line. So, it is a process of elimination. Uh, uh, why is there no enter? I don't, I, I don't know how, but it just, alright. And, it doesn't matter. So let's have a hacking moment right there. But see, it still works. I don't know how we didn't create an error. That was really weird. Alright, so we have, it's probably because number two, number four. No, I, I think you just went on without the and. Okay, so as that that's expected, because ands are just, in general, weird. Now with print numbers, uh, uh, that that was that was a very easy program. But now, now we're gonna move over to elifs. We're gonna go over the more basic, not the more basic, but it's the booleans. We well, you know we you know we know about booleans. So we're gonna talk about is value. So if the could name anything you want, I'm gonna name it is value. If it's equal to true, it is value. It's false. So if something is true, something is false. So if something is not equal to this, it's if this doesn't happen, so I think of it as this. So if if a con if this command happened then it equals to true and when it's true something's gonna happen false it may not happen it may something might happen same thing for this true here so uh uh so let's just put it in a perspective volume put that all right so if something has value it was true use your program where if it is true something will happen if it doesn't it'll be false and if false doesn't happen it'll something else will happen You'll see what I mean. Um, and you, you think about it for two seconds, and you'll you'll eventually know what I'm saying. Look at the code for two seconds, um, pause it, and just you'll understand what I'm actually telling you. So, if is value, and it is valued at the same time. So if it's true and false, well, we're gonna print has value, and it is also pre-valued. All right, amazing, right? Well, let's see. Nope, that didn't work. Wait. And so, if if it's true and if n is valued, has value and p value. So you have to put true on here. As you see here, since it was, this one was false, it didn't pop up anything at the terminal or not to know what the output center. 
this output center doesn't have anything because it doesn't know what to do. So it might just bypass the entire line of code, which is something you might want to do for other programs. But now that we have they're both true, it has valued and pre-valued. Let's just put it to false though. You choose false, alright? Hey, but hey, we didn't we didn't count for that. Well if something is valued and not is value. Alright, so let me just put this here. Alright, so if is value and it's not is value, look what happens. Nothing happens actually because nothing I actually returned. So we'll just put is valued not pre valued. Oh no. Is valued not pre valued. Alright. Alright, look at that. Is valued, not pre valued. You see how it works? You understand what I'm trying to go through here? It is basically a tree. You're trying to understand a tree here. Alright. Elf not is value. And is value. The best thing about programming is that you can just do this wherever. You can literally like be on a vacation and you can literally still program. It's amazing how advanced humans have actually become. But I, I would just think about that while I was doing this tutorial it's amazing as you see here you get a little bunched up because these are our commands but if you put in a value that underscore this underscore connects to this word right here meaning that it is not is so basically look basically, so we have if, if i if i were to name something for function that's what would happen you cannot name something as a function or a command all right so if is value and is valued Alright, if is valued and is valued. Is if if not. If it's not valued and it is valued, then use a little print. Not valued. Pre valued. And of course if if anything else, we'll just do else. I'm just gonna put no value. Alright, pretty snazzy. That is process limitation at the end part. Um, doesn't have to have those space. Let's see what we have here. Look at that. Is valued, not pre valued. So it's valued, but it's not pre valued. So it wasn't valued before. So, hmm, kind of weird, huh? Let's say the user was like, hey, uh, true in this one too, but I want this to be false because I'm going to switch it because I'm a weird guy. I was a valued before, but oh, I. I'm not valued now, but I was valued before. So let's see. Not valued, pre valued. So very nice, very crispy. A lot of programs use that um, algorithm there. It's very nice, but obviously a lot more useful and a lot more complex. Um, so we're gonna have. I'll oh, just do. Def. Hello. I'll put two spaces here now. Hello world. Hello. Alright. Now with this is this little command hello is gonna be used as hello, please sign in. Alright. Well, pre signed in, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. It's not it won't actually do anything. Look. Look at that. It doesn't do anything. Because is just stored in the cache. Let's actually put some use in it. As we get used into it, we're gonna need to do uh, hello. Oh no, hello. We did this. We only want to use it by itself because this was used by itself. It's not adding another parameter. This is just being itself. So hello is itself. Uh, basically, if you, if you're not gonna add anything here, just just put the parentheses. In other words, in more simpler term. Hello, please sign in. Alright, I, I appreciate sure you do that. So, uh, first of all, I don't, I don't want to make it to be uh, really ugly. So, I'm, I'm just going to print. Print. Alright, that's how I do it, at least. That's the way I do it. Now, it'll look a little bit more pretty here. Pretty, it's pretty pretty. 
Anyways, so with that, alright, we're gonna do hello. I said hello like ten times in the past, you know, couple times really. I don't know how that's there. We're gonna remove that. I'll just use this and we'll just print hello. Not hello. Nothing, we're gonna print nothing. Okay, anyways, we're gonna do the hellos now. We're gonna go and we're gonna put username. Or you can name anything really, but for in general, uh, for every programmer, it's usually just username. We're gonna go and we're gonna put enter. I guess username. Really, y'all you know, you know that. Let's do password. All right, equals to input password. Basically, I don't know why I'm, I'm not going through this, but basically username equals the input. Now, usually it's a cache, but as of right now, for some reason, Python is, hey, that's not a cache. Programming, right? So, it'll just put input. I get, we'll store in the cache later. So, it actually is a, actually, you know, it is a cache. Because the input is itself the username. So, this is equal to the input of the user. So, if you type something, that's basically what's going to cache. All right. So, hello, uh, plus our username here, the input that the user has done. Uh, okay, I don't know why I add this here. That's not really great grammar, is it? Uh, your password. Your. Your, your password is, we're going to add password, then we're also going to add this, alright, dot, because grammar and stuff, so we're going to have it over here, uh, look at that, alright, now it says, hello, please sign in, uh, okay, i just put, astro, uh, password, no, okay, I guess I'll put, uh, password. Uh, oh, well, hello, Astro. Your password is is password. Your password is password. That's not it. Let's try it again. Let's put uh, username. Daddy Slayer. Forty-five. Oh, password. Uh, Daddy. Oh, hello, Daddy Slayer. Forty-five. Your password is Daddy. So, very nice. Uh, uh. You know, poker right there. I think you can log in. You can start in a cache if you want. I don't do that because I don't make web based. I don't have like a router or a server that I have. So I make programs that are individual to everybody's computer because I don't have a server and it costs too much to host. So we're gonna go here. There you go. I could put it in my own server to serve my computer, but I, that computer would probably explode. All right, uh, we have that. Let's see what else we have. We're gonna put, we're gonna use, we're gonna actually make a little bit of a pro, quote unquote program. Uh, we're gonna, this might be a little bit more useful one. Input. We're gonna put, oh wait, yeah. Uh, I might also, no, no, I'm not gonna do that. Alright. Input, which is value of product. Or produce, I guess. I guess no product. Produce is fruits or vegetables, right? Something you grow uh, or raise, if you're like that. So uh, we're gonna go here and we're gonna do tax now. You can actually do taxes via where the person is living. So if it's China, I don't know how much taxes China is. Probably about like fifty percent. Um. Anyways, in the United States is at zero point zero zero eight. Uh, you get their IP addresses sockets, but sockets are for another tutorial. Okay, that's how servers know where you live at, alright? Uh, I know how to check uh, in your pull card addresses, but in reality, every server, every website you go on Google knows exactly where you're living, alright? Uh, and, and with that, uh, it's 
people don't really think about that, but it, it is a little bit scary when you think about it. But it really isn't. It is a trustable. Alright, we had to float here because numbers in the United States is 0 0.08, which is a decimal. Alright, so we're gonna have product equals the float of the tax because without the tax, I don't know why tax is capitalized. I don't do my variables capitalized. Oh, go away, please. Thank you. Why? Bro, let me. I hate pie charm. Pie charm's stupid. Alright. I just want to, like, not be stupid. There you go. Alright. Why? I'm not trying to select anything. I'm just trying to go and not use my mouse because mouse sucks. Alright. We're going to add less of the float, the number. What's the float of the number? Which is how taxes work. So we, I, no, we could be like, oh, if you only want the tax, then you could configure it that way. But for right now, I'm just gonna put like how much the product, co the product cost, the tax. And again, no. All right. So we have that. And we're gonna print the cost, cost, or that product. All it is uh, add. Since this is a flow, we want to add it to string so it can actually be a string and be applied as that. Uh, I think that's it actually. All right. That let's see. Let's see what we do now. All right. Hello. Oh, we have to do this again. Buy your product. Uh. Uh, that much. That's how much it costs. The cost for that product is that much with taxes. Let's add. Oh, wait, no. Let's. Okay, taxes. There you go. Now we can actually do it. Cost of that product is thirty four point five six. What is this sixty nine? Why why is that there? Product blah 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 non type and stir. It, it did what I wanted to do, so I, I don't know what it's complaining about. Well no oh I'm so dumb. It's because I'm not adding this. There you go. How many of those you need? You want more? Yep. There you go. Okay. So that's what's going on. Bam, it should work now without having stupid errors, even though it's exactly what I wanted to do. Yep, okay, so the cost of our product is 46.44 taxes. I don't see that. All right. all right, we did all that. We did all this. All right. but let's say I wanted to store something. All right, and I wanted to sort of add it. Okay. With different things, I, I wanted to basically add in just one line of text. Okay. Uh, you probably know how to do it, but I'm gonna adjective. I say I want to make a little bit of a stupid program for the user who don't want it. Uh, let's do enter it, which is blah blah blah. Enter. Enter and adjective causes reasons, right? Age. Input. Enter an age. Okay. Now I'm going to print. I want to print the username. All right. Username from this part right here. I want to add something. Let's add something. Is plus the adjective plus. Uh, let's put this right here. Uh, let's put that. We also want to print. 
can also like a there we go put the plus h plus dot all right <sighs> so i'm assuming you know what it does because i already taught you but as you can see here it does break for two inch adjective i want to say uh um retarded there you go f five four that's been four all right dad is retarded and also acts like a four i didn't add your old also there was there is a type error where is it oh, there it is what should i do you it's adjective uh no <laughs> okay um uh, uh dumb all right into age five so 23 is what 23 is dumb 23 is dumb all right okay i think i got it now let's oh shoot i forgot that let's put it back up all right all right that's the username if you got a pedestrian Astromite. I'm gonna put password. My password for my YouTube channel is actually password. One, two, three. Uh, hello, Astromite. Your password is password one, two, three. Value of product. Um, well, I think I worth about eight dollars, so I'll put that. So I, I I'm actually worth eight dollars sixty four cents of taxes. Adjective. I'm gonna say amazing. All right, and I I I enter an age, and I'll and I'll say uh. I, I'll say that much. All right. So Astromed is amazing. It also acts like a um, nine sick plucal ton year old. Uh, very amazing. Very great. So as you see, a lot of things could happen. And if billions in if statements I just taught you, it'll work as a charm. If you go and learn about sockets, which I'll eventually put out there. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna store stuff in caches, all right? I store stuff in caches. I'm feeling a little bit tired because I talk. I'm I'm not supposed to talk this much. I don't talk that much. Uh, so we have calculator, calculator, underscore uh, one is equal to float input of somebody's stuff so at the float because it could possibly you know calculators do use decimals that's what people mostly use not what people most use calculators but it's around there it's pretty silver calculator because humans are pretty stupid uh we're gonna go here and we're gonna operator okay operator or basically a command we're gonna put input now this is very terminal esque. I don't like doing this, but I'm assuming that you are free at yourself. Uh, I might just show you. I'll put in another video. It's called Arg Parse, and I'll put that in the video so it's not terminal based. Because when you put a calculator, you know it doesn't ask enter a number, or then six, or then enter a variable x, or then enter a second number fourteen, or then it'll give you whatever. Uh, it won't, it won't ask that, all right? It'll, it'll, it'll still be just put nothing. Just enter, enter your command. 10x4. 24. You know, 12x10. 120. You know? Or 2 cube. You know, 6. So, it's, it's just like that, right? We're going to input here. Uh... And you know it might even work with you know quadratics equations. I think it's always the quadratic equation b x equals uh, b plus minus two ac. Um, it's on the formula chart whenever anyone has a test, so we don't really have to remember it. It's kind of useless to remember it. But uh, if you do, uh, you could put it menus there and allow them to go negative through. It's not going to be this rudimentary. But this is just to show you what you can actually do with uh, PyCharm, not PyCharm, Python. Okay. Operator. Cal 
level two. Let's go to to the float of the input. Enter is another another number. All right. Now we all those inputs here. You want to actually put some decent line of code here. Uh, whatever we get, we're gonna we're gonna have to do it. If operator, uh, what kind of what kind of operators do calculators use? Um, well, it'd be plus. So if the operator is equal to plus, so that's what the input is inserted because that's what the cache is. Like I just said, it's gonna be printed. We're gonna return something. Let's do calc you later underscore one now with the math we just imported all the way up here see how it's used now it used to be grayed out since it's used we're going to add some nice juicy calculator calculator underscore two all the people actually have calculators inside the computers so it's actually it's actually not bad to like make your calculator program uh here's your i have one around here No, okay, wait, let me see, let me see if I can calculate it. No, it's already inside here. All right. Our calculator. Okay, we're going to minus the calculator that we just put, we just calculate two. All right. LF, because LF is stuff. LF, the operator. Operator. Now, you could, you could use operator. Usually, it equals... I'm talking about if it, if it, if it, if it, it'd be x x like this one. You can put and if operator equals that, or you can put or something else. But for the sake of it, I'm just gonna put this. Okay. You could put or you could be x. However, people interpret x. Don't matter. So many x's. But that's also a variable, a unidentified variable. So it's not really that uh, preferred. But uh, yeah, all right. So we have that there. Uh, let's see here. We have this. Has to print. Calculator. Let's go one times the calculator two. Oh no. Fine, calculator two. <sighs> Alright, calculator two. My charm sucks. Not really. It's actually amazing. Or you could do LF operator equals. If it equals that I don't know, something else like I say X. Then uh, you could also put calculator one times calculator two. But we're not gonna do that reason to do this. If it equals to this. If it equals to this. Gosh, all right. if it equals to that, we're gonna put uh, print calculator underscore one divided. You guessed it, divided by calculator. You guessed it too. You're so smart. Uh, calculator four underscore two. There you go. Now, uh, we can put an else statement, it's not, you don't really need an else statement, but if this guy is like really retarded or something, you can always put, you're dumb. Choose a valid operator. You don't want to do that if you're creating a program because a lot of people won't obviously get it. But uh, we're just gonna put invalid. All right. All right, let's just see. Uh, Okay, you know, uh, uh, enter number. All right, let's enter number. Operator. Uh, I guess I, did, I don't know. Uh, the plus come on six I guess. Uh, to number number. Oh shoot, I did it wrong. All right, invalid. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, didn't it didn't work. I'll go back. Enter number. Operator. Number. Ooh, 46. Bam. All right. I work with division, all that. 
So let's say you want to get the, uh, you know, you keep the others, you keep the times. It'll work. It'll work the same. You'll see. You'll, you 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 already get the gist of it. All right, we did that, but I didn't actually talk about caches. I figured I'd just skip caches. All right, uh, let's just do uh, caches actually. I do do caches. Uh, let's put numbers. Numbers equal. They just, they, they, these are going to be called, what, what are they called? Coordinates? You can't. No, they don't. Coordinates or something else. These are coordinates, right? The coordinates are just these. You can't alter them in any single way. No matter how much you want to alter them with variables and stuff. So we're just going to do. Uh, I guess we do password. I guess we do password. Let's throw my password somewhere. Let's say we have a server and it's collecting all the passwords, except this is just not a server because it's not collecting passwords. Where we make a cache here, ma ma whatever cache you really want to do, uh, we do password. Uh, I mean, yeah, you know, you wouldn't believe how many people pass. Actually, a lot of websites they kind of way they're way 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 too secure. I'm gonna add something else. Uh, how many passwords out there? A lot of passwords are like admin that's sort of like school networks or for wi-fi networks uh, what's a password uh but before we do anything if you want to print the passwords and you can you will print every single three of one of them okay but let's do want a password add so let's add password password dot so let's do insert something i'm gonna enter uh we're gonna enter i don't know Number one, two, three, four. Password. There you go. Oh, insert. Insert. Oh, insert is not working. Password. Password. Insert. Let's see how it goes. That we're gonna print password. All right. So it should. You think it should only print these three here? But uh, it'd be insert or something. So let's see. Password, 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 23, right? These are lines, huh? These are lines, these are lines, these are lines, that's why, okay? These are lines. So you know how Python counts? Uh, I'm gonna show programming counts. And the computers, they count from zero to whatever other number. So basically, this, this one right here, that's zero. One, two, three. All right, uh, we're gonna insert this, let's, let's say two. Watch what happens. But you see how the 23, it's moved. It's moved, huh? It's moved to 0, 1, 2, which is this. So computers, 0, 2. So this is just line 2 since these commas are separated. All right. So that's how that works. That's how coordinate works. We're going to go into a little more advanced places. I've already, arrived, I've already wrote 100 lines of codes. But we're going to go. We got to put. Identities. Identities, they're very important. We have identity. Like in C plus plus, or you wanna put an enter in between the two parentheses. That way uh, we can have other things. Now this is one, which is gonna be alpha. That's its value. That's alpha's value. That's that is what alpha equals. Alpha is gonna equal one. Uh, I don't know why it's saying that it's an error. Unexpected syntax. All right. Well, I don't care. We're gonna do two. Is this how it's supposed to be? That is not how it's supposed to be. Bravo. All right. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Okay. Get back on track. Get back on track. We have un unexpected expression syntax. Well, no, it's because okay. Well, identities they don't use these. They they don't use that. That's that's too cool for school. So we gotta use something a little bit more rudimentary. We're gonna put one of these. Boop, boop. I can't do your voice right now, but uh. Boop. Okay. Well, it didn't work. It didn't work. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. Okay. I believe that's it. I believe that's it. 
That is it. All right, that's it. That's it. So alpha equals one. Uh, cherry equals horrible. Old. Uh, uh, I'm poor. Uh, print. Uh, I mean, it doesn't even matter, it doesn't. I was trying to make it nice and neat, but I don't care anymore. We're gonna print the identity of one. That's print one. What is it gonna put? What is it gonna put? It's gonna put. It's gonna put. It's gonna print alpha. What if you put two? This is all like SQL, actually. This Python. It's a stretch of creepy language. Bravo. See, great, it's amazing. Uh cash is cool, they're awesome. Alright. Okay, so we have this, but these are, are called key values, and these kind of key values they're real values, right? So if someone like asks uh something else, you might might just want to put key value dot Uh so if you wanna if you wanna actually get something kind of like a scratch your cubial language, we'll put identity. And uh we gotta put seven here because cool and all that. Let's put the oh wait, you're dumb. There's no key. Key value pair not found, you idiot. Right? Is that is that redundant? No? Okay, good. It's fantastic. Plastic, plastic. Keep buying a phone. Mmm. All right. Dot get. Dot get. If it's seven, 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 seven. No, I think it's. I think it's three. If anything, it's over three. It, it, it will just put keep value in a phone. Anyways, so we have the alpha. Alpha. We're gonna need something alpha. We gotta put wild loops. Wild loops. They're amazing! They're so cool. And they're so useful. Oh my gosh, bro. I am tired. Okay. Alright. Well, the alpha is greater than or equal to. No, if less than two. Then you know what I'm gonna do? I'm, 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 I'm gonna put. Wow, alpha. Wait, no. Why is it, why is it indented? I didn't ask for the indent. Okay, so so it's alpha equals alpha plus one. All right, then we're gonna print alpha. I'm gonna print alpha because I just like the word alpha a lot. All right, I think alpha is actually a l f a, but you won't you won't mind that. L f alpha is equal to two. We're gonna name print Bravo. Because Bravo's not as cool as Alpha. Because he, he's just. He's just. He's just, he's just quite not up there. He's. He's pretty. Pretty cool, I guess. But. <sighs> LF Alpha, I don't know how. I don't know. Did I fix it? No, no, I fixed it. I think it's because I don't know if alpha is equal to one. It was alpha plus one. Then we're gonna print alpha. Alpha is less than two, right? Then we're gonna f alpha is equal to alpha plus one, which is two, then we're gonna print alpha. But if not, we're gonna print two. I don't know how it's not working. Oh wait no! No 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 If it's if it's if it's if it's if 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 alpha is equal to one, then we'll we'll print out alpha. There you go. See I'm smart. All right. All right. Bravo. Because one, and if L is equal to, so 
You get it. All right. So since alpha is equal to one and alpha is plus one, is alpha equals one alpha? But if alpha equals zero, it equals two. So if I just put the zero, uh, watch what happens. That's what you do. It will constantly add one. It will constantly add one no matter what. So it could be negative one billion. It will still still print Bravo. It will never be alpha. All right. All right. Pretty cool. Pretty amazing. Uh, so let's make an anti uh, brute force mechanism. It's pretty cool. Um, uh, nearly every server now has that. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna put username equals guess equals nothing because we have have input yet guess under amount uh, equals to zero since we haven't tried yet because when you have a try equal to zero and I guess limit whatever limit you really want I'm gonna put the limit of like uh, I guess not, I'm gonna put cap cap equals usually I just put three three is a nice fair number I think I, I think five five is definitely more fair number anti NT underscore breach force equals false 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 yes, I mean unless you've gotten five I'm not gonna lock you up yet we're gonna use a little bit of a while so while guess does not equal to the username and not anti no, if it's not anti brute force all right because while it's not equal and it's brute force but if brute force is true then you're also going to lock them out guess cap or guess amount i guess i should say is if guess map is over and, or the guess limit or guess cap then you want to do if guess is less than if it's less than we're gonna no if it's less than then we're not gonna lock out yet because that was less I just put yes equals input and since that we're gonna put enter password uh, password uh, guess Close to guess amount plus one because as it goes through, as the code landing goes through, that's how codes work. They just go through and they will go symmetrically with that. And sooner or later, it's going to equal to that because if that happened, that this has to happen. Force equals true. And if that happens, oh, you're in a whole bunch of trouble, boy. Because if Anti, anti brute force. This is actually very useful for just any survey, I guess. But we're print. We have to put a time. So how fast they put it. Uh, I would have put my server though because I think people get hacked. It's kind of funny. Uh, anyways, X is denied. Uh, unless it's like something they get profits profit from. Not a good. I, I, I probably will pull. Uh, else. Thanks, is denied. Else, 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 else. We'll just print access credit. Alright, I know it's kind of cheesy. Access granted. Alright. Now we're gonna try it. We're going to try it, alright? I'm not, not sure how many times I want to try it. But I do want to try it, my dear. <sighs> access granted. See, I put 23, and then I think I typed on so fast, so amazingly fast that I've actually broken it, and I, I have um, done 23 twice. Cause I'm just that amazing. I ABC. Okay, so anyways, we're gonna put Bravo. Uh, Charlie. I 
know that Alpha is probably not that high spoiled, but I think Alpha should be spoiled. Definitely like that. It just looks cool. Alright. More ABC underscore. Hard? in ABC put ABC underscore part alright I, I, I'm going to run this to see how it is alright I'm, I'm gonna oh no it okay it didn't lock me up alright so okay so basically for every bit is basically you're gonna print everything from this part right here uh, every single string here, so ABC equals to ABC part, and ABC print ABC part. So every part in here, so it'll print out everything, even if it uh, changes, which could be used for the passwords, which is very nice, very cool. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna make another program here, just to show you what you do. So the number, which is a power number. We're gonna go. We're going to put results equals one. Right. Result equals one. Okay. If you if all this code, if you really do think about it, you actually find out. But, all right. So for index uh, in range of the power number. All right. Results equals results times number. I don't even know what to type anymore. All I know is that this is working out. Alright. Return results. Alright. Now we made a little power here. So you know what powers are. The piece of power we're gonna print something. So what is the power of six to six? Alright. Uh, you fix it. All right, let's go. I, I <sighs> all right, six power six six. All right, so I'm gonna explain it. I'm gonna define a little script code here that we've coded, and you're gonna be power. And with this power, you want the number and the power number. So if six to the power of six, well, it's gonna you would, we'll have one here, so result in range power. <laughs> Which is the power number we're gonna index for range power. This power is result equals result times the number of the power. You understand it? Uh, okay. This is just gonna pull out the power number. It's a very complex way of doing it, but I'm trying to tell you that even though this is kind of useless, there's always different ways to do programs. That's why every program is different. Okay, some people say that 10 plus 10 equals, or how do you get to 20, or how do you get to 100? 50 plus 50. It was 100. People are like, no, actually, 10 times, you know, uh, 10 is 100. What are you talking about? And people are like, no, 99 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 plus 40 minus 40 plus 62 minus 50 plus 10 plus minus 20 equals to 100. That's why there's always different ways to program. And I literally... You could have just went here and just said, A, hey, the power is 6. But no, I did all this to really show you that there's already different ways that you can program. All right? And all this stuff may seem useless, because it is. But in general programs, it will be quite useful. I'll talk about grids. Grids, grids are kind of cool. Equal, uh, I'm going to use these here. Uh, so grids is sort of like a phone in a way, uh, except it's not a phone. So we're going to put one... To you know how grid works. These are rows. These are columns. You know, th this is a row here. All right. Uh, then we have another bit. We're gonna add another row. But up and down is obviously the columns. Critical. All right. Um, you, you kind of like a phone number. I'm I'm sleep like that because I'm too bothered. So we're we gonna print grid. 
zero zero and that would be what what, what, what would zero zero be if you if you have paid attention or if you pause the video to try to understand what i'm typing with the things i taught you then you'll actually see this here what would it be it'd be one it'd be one it'd be a hundred percent one right One, see? So, we have the X and the Y. Was it the X? The Y. Zero. If you put one, it'd be two. And two, it's kind of weird. It really is weird. Right? You also get the rows. So, if you want to have four of the rows in the grid, uh, you can just print the row. Okay, four the row in grid which is equal to four callum callum it's callum dj cali uh in row and you want to print out the column for them which is just the thing we just identified so sure all right let me call call um Um, all right, let's see, 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 you can also do it four rows, but I want to do that, see, look at that, it prints the entire, the entire, everything, it prints everything to row, that's exactly what I wanted, so for running grid, uh, for column and row, I want to print column, easy, simple, right, let's make an encryptor, let's make an encryptor now, uh, yeah, I'm bored, so I'm making an encryptor. We need an encryptor. Encryptor. Uh, that's nice, bro. I always do wanna decryptor. Wanna decryptor. Alright. I'll, I'll leave it that. There we go. We're gonna uh, put it into sentence, which is we haven't defined yet. But we want to find it. We don't want to do it by itself. We don't want to. Uh, Put it into itself. So we get the translation equals to nothing because, I mean, uh, translation. All right. Uh, then we have for the index in in the sentence. We want to if the index is dot upper. N A E I U. So it could be anything. It could be lower if you really wanted to. But anything in upper that is A E I O U. We're going to be if the index dot I -E is upper. That I just showed you. Then with that, I want to have a translation. This translation equals translation, but. But. We're gonna add something. We're gonna call it. Um, you know how you like this HTML? Alright. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But this is literally every time I go into Wireshark. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I, this is exactly what I see when I go into Wireshark. Exactly what I see. Alright. Exactly, exactly what I see. But if, if else. That I want, I want it to be that translation not just that i mean i could have like a million else's make it military grade but i mean it's gonna make it very basic so you can't do anything it's actually a very good program if you want to make military grade program you can literally do this for so long but it's actually random and it's what the user inputs then you can actually make a pretty decent program it's it won't be bad it's your own encryptor and you have sockets it could be amazing oh, sh oh i did not mean to say that i'm sorry that's not really Holy and Christful of me. Huh? Behold the atheist's nightmare. Now Boy, if you don't get. It's gonna go down. Uh, why is it not. Alright, let's, let's eliminate these. Alright. Alright, okay, maybe it was a little bit too long. I'm not gonna lie. It's, uh, it's up there. Anyways. Ah. Uh, but else, translation. 
just you know, we just talked about it, but I don't think I explained the translation or index. But the index is basically, um, uh, basically the the sentence that they're actually putting in. And you are going to return translation. All right, translation. Okay, okay. That 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 thing. Just put that thing. Whatever this is, one two three five. That can go away. Right. Okay, 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 okay. We're gonna print. Translate input. Oh, no, 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 trans. Trans. One of decryptor. It's it's uh, it's one of decryptor. That's the name thing I I called it. It kind of screwed me over. So either you actually have to name it something great. Wanna decryptor? Um, we're gonna add an input for user so we can actually encrypt it. Uh, plus, GUI, this could be actually not bad. So, make your own program. If you had GUI, I'll upload GUI. Alright. I injury sentence. Okay. Uh, what does this say? Colon expected. Alright. Uh, we'll just do this. Oh, oh well. All right, let's see. All right, I don't want to go through it too fast. Enter a sentence. I absolutely love this person watching this tutorial, but that's fine. That's it. That's that's what you get. All right. I mean, that's that looks military grade itself. I mean. And if you to pervert it, it it it'll, it'll come out as I absolutely love this once. It goes further, but yeah, it goes further because it starts to I and then A. See, that's the space. So that's I and that's A, and then it comes back. So it's actually a really good encoding. Wow, I might just think of making a program about this. It's actually not bad. It's not. It's not bad. Hey, you want to make it first though, don't you? All right. Uh, we, we made that let's do printing translation oh we also have comments comments pretty cool this is just comment it's just a for double for double. like this 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 is a comment so you don't forget stuff it's, it's basically what it is you also have these i'm also a comment just put i'm also a comment. these are actually just i'm also a comment. this is actually a string when you think about it it quite literally is a string. Yeah, so it basically is a string. Alright, and if you print it, you won't find anything, alright? Alright, so as you see here, it won't actually show uh, the comment. You made it really advanced. You guys actually pretty go somewhere with it. I'm not gonna lie. This is the end of the tutorial, guys. Thank you so much for watching. But until next time, goodbye.